Up to this point, we've talked about mathematical sequences, we've talked about arithmetic sequences, we've talked about geometric sequences, um, and now we're going to talk about arithmetic series. So series is kind of like um, an umbrella over sequences, I guess. So um, our central question we're going to be answering is how can you model the sum of an arithmetic series? We're going to define what an arithmetic series is, and we're going to find sums of those series. So for your vocab, a series is the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. So just um, you have a sequence that um, in this case would be algebraic, and the series is just a certain number of terms. A finite series has a first and a last term, where an infinite series has a first term, but then it continues without end. An arithmetic series in specific is a series whose terms form an arithmetic sequence. So in order for it to be an arithmetic series, it has to be made from numbers that are an arithmetic sequence. And you remember it's arithmetic if it, we have a common difference. So we're adding or subtracting the same number between each term. And a new word, limits, are the least and the greatest values of n in the series. So our first term and our whatever our last term is, our greatest value. So you're going to want to know this equation. To find the sum of a finite arithmetic series, um, you have S sub n, the sum of the terms, the number of terms, is n, your number of terms divided by 2, times the quantity, a1, your first term, plus a sub n, your last term. Okay, so make sure you know that formula. So finding the sum of a finite arithmetic series. So we're going to use that formula that we just learned. What is the sum of the even integers two, uh, from 2 to 100? Okay, so first we need to ask ourselves. So I'm looking at even integers. My integers are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way to 100. So how many terms is that going to be? If we have all the even numbers from 1 through 100, how many numbers do we have? We have 50. So our series is 2, 4, 6. We're going to be adding them all together. a sub 1 is 2. a sub n is 100. So our first term is 2. Our last term is 100. There are 50 terms in the sequence, and our common difference is 2. So we're going to plug all those things into that formula. s sub n equals um, n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So 50 divided by 2 times 2 plus 100. 50 divided by 2 is 25, uh, 2 plus 100 is 102, and 25 times 102 is 2,550. So that gives you the sum of all of those terms from 2 through 100, even integers. Okay, <clears throat> using the sum of a finite arithmetic series. So a company pays ten, a $10,000 bonus to salespeople at the end of their first 50 weeks if they make 10 sales in their first week and then improve their sales by two each week thereafter. So what this company does, um, first of all, who would like a $10,000 bonus? I sure would. I'd be willing to work pretty hard for 50 weeks. Um, so what they do is if you sell, make 10 sales of whatever their product is, and then you increase by two more each week. So after the first week, on the second week, you'll have to have made 12 sales. On the third week, you'll have to have made uh, 14 sales, and it increases by two each time. So one salesperson qualified for the bonus with the minimum possible number of sales. How many sales did the person make in week 50 and then in all 50 weeks? So if we want to look at specifically week 50, um, we need to make an equation. <clears throat> So if we know a sub 1 is 10 and our common difference is 2, we can plug that in to our arithmetic sequence formula. Do you remember that one? And that one said um, a sub 50, your 50th term is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So if you just simplify that, um, you get 49 times 2 plus 10. So in the 50th week, um, that particular um, salesman made 108 sales. All right, so we found in the 50th week, now if we find the sum of all the sales from weeks 1 through week 50, we use our summation formula. So there were 50 weeks, so we have S sub 50 equals 50 divided by 2 times A sub 1 is 10 plus A sub N, our 50th week is 108. So you add 110, or 
10 plus 108, and that's 118, times 25. And you get that that person made a total of 2,950 sales in those 50 weeks. That's a lot of sales. I'd be willing to give you a bonus. All right, we also have summation notation. So we can use um, the Greek capital letter sigma, which is that E looking thing, to indicate a sum. So that's all that means is a sum. You're going to add them together. Um, with it, uh, use limits to indicate how many terms you're adding. So for example, if you have 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared all the way up to 108 squared, you can write it as the summation of n equals 3, because that's our first term, 3, raised to the power, or not raised to the power, to 108. So first term goes on the bottom, uh, last term goes on the top, and then whatever you're doing on each term. So every term is squared. So we have 3 squared, and then 4 squared, and then 5 squared. Um, so let's write a series in summation notation. So here's my um, series, 7 plus 11 plus 15, all the way to 203 plus 207. Now, in order to write our summation, whoa, I don't know if you can see that freaking out, but it is definitely freaking out. Okay, in order to write that summation, first we need to write an explicit formula. So we need to um, use our a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So our a sub 1, our first term is 7, plus we're looking at n. We don't know what n is, minus 1, and our common difference is 4. So if we simplified this, you um, multiply, you get 4n minus 4, and then 7 minus 4 is 3. So 4n plus 3 is our formula in order for finding this, um, the nth term. So now if we wanted to talk about um, the summation part, we have to plug in 207, that's our last term, equals 4n plus 3, and then solve for n. How many terms are there from 7 to 207? So if you solve for n, subtract 3, divide by 4, you get n is 51. So there are 51 terms. So then we just take that information to write our summation. So from our term 1, so n equals 1, to our term 51 with our formula 4n plus 3, you put that into your summation formula, n equals 1 to 51 of 4n plus 3. All right, what is the sum of the series written in summation notation? So from n equals 1 to 70 of 5n plus 3. So in order to find the sum of this, what you have to do is you find a sub 1 and you find a sub 70, and then you're going to use your summation notation. So 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, and then plug in 70. 5 times 70 plus 3 is 353. So we know our first term, and we know our last term. So to find our summation, we just plug that into our formula. There are 70 terms, so 70 divided by 2 times 8 plus 353. You simplify that, you get 12,635. That's a lot of numbers. Okay, and just as a note, even if the series is not arithmetic, you can evaluate it by adding all the terms together. So you can find out what each term is. Um, obviously, if it's going to be from like 1 to 70, that's not going to be a lot of fun. But if you only have like 6 terms, so 1 to 6, you can figure out what each one of those terms is and add them all together. So for example, that n squared um, that we talked about in our first summation example, that's not an arithmetic series. But you could still find a summation. And that's it. Here's your lesson check. And don't forget to do your homework.